In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily do web scraping using Python and Pandas. With Pandas, we can extract data from some websites like Wikipedia and do this in a couple of minutes. In this case, I'm going to extract data from the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 and we're going to scrape these tables that you can see here. And on the next video, I'm going to show you how to scrape data from the World Cup 1932 2018 and also the fixture from this coming World Cup Qatar 2022. So let's get started. All right, to easily scrape tables from websites such as Wikipedia, what we have to do first is install pandas. So we have to write pip install pandas. If you're using Jupyter Notebooks like me, you have to add this, uh, this sign and then you have to run this. In my case, I already have pandas so I can write I can write only uh, import pandas as pd. So this is how you do this. Then what we have to do is use a method called read HTML. So I write read underscore HTML, and then we have to write the name of the website. In this case, I already have the name of the website, but what you have to do is go to the website I had before and copy and paste it. So you have to go here and copy and paste this website. So in my case, I'm just going to paste the website and it's here. All right, after we do this, I'm gonna give a name to this expression. So I'm gonna name it as all underscore tables. So we're gonna scrape tables only and I name it all underscore tables. So I run this and now we can see the content inside this variable. So I run all underscore tables and we see that we have a lot of content. So not all of them are tables because if we uh, see the content here. I'm opening this square bracket zero to fur to see the first element So we can see that this is a table, but this is not that table that we're looking for We're only looking for tables from the workout, which is group a B C until H so what we have to do here is to uh, Go and write one by one until we find the uh, group A. So I already know that group A is the number 11. So if I write 11, we have the table of group A. So is this one. And then if we want the table of group B, we have to go until I believe is uh, 18. So if we run this, we have the the table of group B, which is this one. So we see here England, uh, Iran, United States, Wales, and it's here, so it's the table. So you can see that we have to go uh, every seven tables, so 11 plus seven, 18. So 18 plus seven, 25, and we should get a table of group C, which is Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland, so it's this one. So we successfully found the pattern to found to get all the tables. So that's basically what we have to do to scrape all the tables of this website. So the last table that we want, I believe is table 60. If I'm not wrong, yeah, this is the last table which belongs to this one belongs to group H, I believe. So is group H. So this is the last table we want. So that's it. Now we can do some modifications to uh, customize our tables. For example, we can change the column name, which is this one. Uh, I want this to rename as team. And also we can get rid of this table that I'm not, uh, sorry, this column that I'm not gonna use. In this case, qualification. I'm not gonna use this column in the future for a future project, so I wanna get rid of this. And to do this, we can use a for loop. So to modify each data frame. So what I can do here is first write for i in and then I write a range. So first we have to write the first element, which is 11, which is this one. Then the last element, which is 60. And then the step. In this case, I'm going after seven tables. So seven. So we get 11, 18, 25 and until actually it's 67 because the last one is not uh, included. So 67 is not gonna be included, but 60. So that's it. If we print this, we see all of this. So 11 is group eight, 18 is group B and so on. So we have this. Now I want to link each number which the table that I'm going to scrape. So for example, the first table is group A, the second is group B, 
and the last one is group H. So to link this number with the table, what we have to do is use another library. In this case, I'm going to use the string uh, library. So I write a string from a string import and now I uh, import ASCII. So I write ASCII. In this case, I want it in uppercase. So I write underscore uppercase and I'm going to name this as the alphabet because this actually gives me the alphabet. So I run this and now if I copy and paste this one here, we can see that we have the alphabet, which is this one. So this is my alphabet and this is going to help me link the letters with the numbers. And that's very good if I want to better organize my tables because this is very ugly. I don't want 11, 18, 25. That doesn't mean anything. But group A, B and C until H actually has a meaning. So I'm going to link them. And to do this, I'm going to use a function called zip. So if I write zip here and open parentheses, now we have to link this numbers with the letters. So I can write alphabet as my first element and then this range as the second element. Now I can write letter and now I can print both. So letter and I. Then I run this and as we can see now we linked this letter with this number. So 11 is for A and 60 is for H. So we successfully linked these two. Now I'm going to clean uh, these uh, tables or these data frames and then I'm going to create a dictionary. So first I'm going to clean this data frame because it has some dirty data here. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these old tables. I'm going to copy and paste it here so you can see it much better. And now I'm going to use this variable. So now I write all underscore tables and I'm going to uh, open these square brackets and use I. So for each uh, iteration, I'm going to get a data frame and it's going to be, uh, for example, data frame of group A, then of group B until group H. So I'm going to get one by one. Then I'm going to rename each uh, each column that is named team BTE. I don't want this name. I want to rename it. So I use DF that rename open these uh, parentheses, then columns uh, equal to and we open this uh, curly braces. Then I want this uh, column name rename as um, team. So that's what I'm going to do. Then I write in place equal to true. So we save all the changes that we're making here. So if we run this, we're going to have an issue because not all the all the data frames have this team VTA column. If we see here, uh, data frame 60, this one has this one and probably 25. Yeah, it has the same column and 18. Yeah, it has. But 11, it has this weird uh, name, which is huge. And that's going to cause me a problem here because that data frame, which is the first one, doesn't have this name. So I'm going to get an error saying that the column name is not there. So to avoid that issue, what I'm going to do is use a method called uh, uh, columns actually it's an attribute I believe so here I'm gonna write uh, I'm gonna open here and I'm gonna write uh, I'm gonna use the one of these data frames so you understand me much better and I'm gonna just copy this one for example and write it here then this is my data frame of course then I write columns and if I run this you can see that I get all the columns Post, team VT, PLD. I'm going to run this here so you can see. So all of this here are here. All the, all the letters in bold that represent the columns are in my list. So now what I can do is um, go to 11 and see what I get. So we see that we get all the columns and yeah. But this looks ugly, but we see that the second element is team 
And if we go to, for example, 18, we see that the second element is still team. And if we go to 60, we see that it has the same position. So what we can do is just get the second column, which is represented by this index one in Python, it starts the index with zero. So the second will be one. And if we run this, we have this name of the column. So we don't have to write the name of the column, but only use this uh, attribute and we get the name of the column we want uh, independently of the, of the name. So if we write 11, we get that one. Uh, actually, actually 11 here, sorry, I made a mistake, 11 here and here uh, one. So yeah, this is the ugly or huge uh, column name. So now what we have to do is just copy this and now uh, put it here. So instead of writing this column name, I'm going to use uh, df that columns one. So this is, this represents the second column of each data frame that we have here. So group A until group H. So now I delete this and now it's here. So now finally, I'm going to delete this column. As I said, I don't want this qualification column. So I use the pop method and write the name of this column. In this case, all the data frames have this name. I checked this before and all of them have this column name. Our, the name is the same. And finally, I'm going to write the I'm going to create that dictionary. And to do this, I have just to write a, an empty dictionary. So I write dict underscore table equal to, and I have these curly braces. So this indicates that I'm creating an empty dictionary. And then I write dict underscore table. And then I open these uh, square brackets, sorry, these, uh, yeah, square brackets to create a new element. So for example, I want my new uh, key in this case, name as group A. And then this is equal to the value, which is going to be the DF. So in the first iteration, we get uh, element A, and then we get a data frame, uh, in this case, table A or group A, and this is going to be in this key. And to create different keys, not only group A, but group A, B until H, we have to use uh, this F string and then open these curly braces. So these curly braces in the F string allows me to put a variable. In this case, I'm going to write here the letter, which is this that I'm, I obtained from the alphabet. And yeah, this is going to help me get from A to H. So that's pretty much it. Now we can run this and see the results. So now I run this and yeah, it's successfully run. And now I can see the content of my dictionary. So I write dict underscore table. And now I can use the keys method to see all the keys. So I have from group A to group H. Great. Now I can see the content of each key, in this case, group A. So I see, I write group A and now I see the table of group A. Now if I write group B, I get the table of group B and so on. If I change to group H, this is the table of group H. And that's how we successfully scrape all the data of this website. And also we uh, created a dictionary to better manage all this data. Finally, uh, one extra step that you can do in case you want to use this, uh, this dictionary in a project as I'm going to do in this series of videos is uh, use the pickle um, library to export this dictionary. So to export this dictionary and use it in another file, we can use pickle. So we only have to write import pickle. In case you don't have it, you just have to install it with pip pip install pickle. In case you don't have it, I already have it installed. So I'm going to use this one. So to do this, to export this dictionary in a file, what we have to do is write the following. We write with, then we write open, then we write the name that we want to export this uh, file. So the name I want, I don't know, is dict underscore table. You can write whatever you want, but I'm going to name it like that. 
Then I write WB, which uh, stands for write bytes, I believe. And then I write as and the name as uh, or the name I want to sign. So this represents all of this represents output. And now I'm going to use pickle. So I write pickle that dump to dump all this data in my dictionary. So I write dict underscore table and then I write the name um, output here. So basically what I'm saying here is all the data that is inside this dict underscore table that we created, uh, all this data, put it in this uh, file that I'm creating. So put it inside this. And now we only have to run this. And that's it. If we go to our working uh, directory, we can see that there is a new file and it's dict underscore table. And that's how we export our dictionary. And that's it. That's it for this video. In the following video, I'm going to show you how to scrape the data of all the matches uh, that are going to be played in the work app. So basically, we're going to get the fixture. And also, I'm going to show you how to extract all the historical data from the from all the work apps from 1930 to 2018. So you can have a database of all the matches. But that's going to be on the next video. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. That's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.